welcome to our prep preview show, Baton Rouge Edition. I'm Julie Bodoy, and this is Jarrett Roser, prep writer, but I'm sure you guys know who he is by now. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jarrett, we really don't have a lot of time, and we have a lot to talk about, so let's get straight to it. Football season is right around the corner. Which teams in the Baton Rouge area do you expect to make a splash in the 2015 season? Uh, we were just, I guess, talking about where to start here, and <laughs> Zachary, a team that... Uh, came just short of the dome last year, ends up being number two in our top 50 countdown over the summer. And for good reason, most of the the team from last year is back this yeah. year, centered around quarterback Lindsey Scott, uh, several other guys, Kelton Hollins, big offensive lineman, uh, who is you know one of the better offensive linemen in the state. But this was the year that Coach David Brewerton felt in his second year might be a pretty special team. And he comes in last year, they have maybe as good a year as they've ever had. Mm -hmm. and and bring everyone back from it. Uh, teams that you know we saw more of, I guess, going back further in history than just Zachary kind of surprising some people last year. Catholic High has been always steady, pretty much for I mean for decades now. Seems like they're churning out D1 talent year after year. Uh, Darius Geis, the running back, is at LSU now, but they've got a uh, young guy, Clodrick uh, Edwards Hilaire. Uh, who, when he was in, I guess, eighth grade, Darius was still a sophomore, Khalil Thomas, who's at McNeese State now, was a senior. And after practice one day, Khalil and Darius told me, you know, we've got a guy a couple years younger than us, might be better than either of us by the time it's all said and done. LSU's already offered him. Yeah. And so he, I mean, he's certainly a very quick, very special player to watch. Two teams that won state championships last year, U High in Division II, uh, Livonia in Class 3A, which will now be in, in Class 4A, uh, certainly interesting. You see Nick Brosette, who's at LSU now, holding up that trophy it's for, Dylan Moses for U High. Him. Exactly. Dylan Moses right behind him uh, will just be a junior this year. And as much talent as, as they graduated from, from the U last year, you look at Jalen Baker, Nicholas Brosette. E.J. Oglesby and some of those guys in that picture. Dylan Moses and a, a slew of other talented players are, are back. Uh, Malik Antoine and Trey Jackson will both be back as seniors. Uh, Adrian Ely is another recruit type guy, the big offensive lineman who's going to be a junior this year. And then D.J. White, who most people for the last couple of years know more from basketball, basketball yeah. will take over at quarterback. And folks are pretty excited about him as well as just the, uh, the cast of, of strong players players across that team that maybe folks don't know on the recruiting trail as much but who are heck of uh, heck of high school football players it um it seems like we've been talking about Dylan Moses for years like you said he's only gonna be a junior it seems like yeah. we've been talking about him for three four years now it's kind of crazy he, he was on the cover of ESPN the magazine at like 14 15 yeah. years old I think he might have just turned 15 at that point um, and what about Livonia? Like you said, they, they won last year. They, they bring back a lot of talent this year. We had them pretty high in our, in our preseason top 50 as well. Yeah, they have tons of recruits everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, some of the guys you can see in that picture, I th think that looks like Willie Baker, the big defensive end, uh, laying down near that trophy. Uh, Patrick Queen, another guy there. Kendrick Paul. Uh, a lot of talent. Barrick Slaughter is another guy that mm -hmm. they bring back. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see with the growth that they've had as a program over the years from having never gotten past the second round until uh, Coach Brewerton got them to the semis, got them to the dome, and then last year under Guy Mastretta they win a state championship. Uh, they'll now move up to 4A and they'll have to stay focused against that much more interesting yeah. level of competition with, I mean, teams like Neville and we've seen Easton and Carr have mm -hmm. success in the past too. Do you expect to see those four teams um, deep into the playoffs this year? Do you expect them to be in the in December, those four teams that we just talked about. I think all of them, all of them will make the playoffs, and I think they all have a chance to make a run for the dome. We'll see how it pans out. Obviously, at that time of year, you need to be healthy and playing mm -hmm. your best football. Livonia is going into a whole different challenge, as we just mentioned that, that they haven't seen. Um, but these these teams certainly have a chance, uh, and I wouldn't be surprised to see any of them uh, in New Orleans in December. Before we wrap things up, let's talk about some of the smaller schools that have um, had recent success in the past couple of years, and maybe some of the schools that you expect to see again, and maybe in the in the dome in December. Because. Uh, 
the the bigger schools, there's a lot that, yeah. that could make some things happen. Uh, certainly, deep playoff runs. Smaller schools, you look at Parkview Baptist, U High's district rival, that was in the state championship against U High last year. They bring back most of that team. Several notable performers, uh, including Reggie Hayes at quarterback. Uh, Southern Lab, you look at Bladrick Veal, like a little brother of me out there in Baton Rouge. <laughs> that team was in the dome last year. Had a disappointing day against uh, OCS in the Division Four state championship. Uh, most of the notable guys from that team are back. They, they lose a couple seniors in Javon Ferguson and Joe McWilliams, but that's a loaded team for a 1A school. They're definitely loaded, but you and I both know they have a tough schedule ahead. Yeah. And a very I, tough schedule. I think the schedule will be interesting when they play some of those bigger schools. They go to IMG mm -hmm. Academy, which might be the best football team at the high school level in the country this year. Uh, but. They've, they've played some tough schedules, nothing like that, but they've played some tough schedules in the past, and it kind of gets them ready, I think, for the playoffs for the most part. They should be as talented as maybe anybody in Division Four, particularly with a team like OCS moving up. Uh, their old district rival, Madison Prep, will be a 2A in Division Three school this year. They, Madison Prep's a school that surprised a lot of people yeah. last year with a deep playoff run. They've got Malcolm Roach back, who was the defensive player of the year for the small schools in Baton Rouge last year. Tons of college attention over the summer and is you know he's he's got a few SEC offers gonna make somebody pretty happy probably at the next level. They might be a team that now in division three could make a, a little bit of an interesting run at the next level. A lot of talented uh, schools out in your area, Darren. Yeah, we'll see if uh if they make good on that that talent once they, they hit the football field, particularly in the playoffs. You're definitely going to have a busy, busy season. Um, there you have it, folks. For Jarrett Roser, I'm Julie Bodwam. Thanks for watching.